Well, hello everyone and welcome. It's a very cold day today, Saturday morning, 23 degrees this morning, and Santa's sleigh has just arrived. And I will tell you, it's not a Rigol. It's just a Rigol box. Mike over at Mike's Radio Repair told me he was sending me a Christmas present and two things he said one don't go out and buy anything he's got me something I've been wanting and two he told me it's coming in a Rigol box but it's not a Rigol so let's open this up and see what Santa has brought Been sitting here waiting all day for uh, FedEx to come by. So, and we have a note that starts off with Merry Christmas and it ends with Mike. I'm not going to read all of it yet because it will kind of spoil it. But he said he's done some uh, calibrating and polishing. And piece of fine. Mike always does a wonderful thing at packing stuff. Two pieces of fine. More fine. Lots of fun. And then some bubble wrap. And I still have no idea what it is. I can tell you that the metal is very cold. Something that looks very familiar. as a manual. And I know what this is. <laughs> Sign out of three, the instruction manuals. Now this is very, very sweet. And what we have here is the sign out of three that is used for adjusting the receivers. And I have been wanting one of these very badly and had almost decided to just go ahead and build one um, out of, uh, I think it was the helper manual. There's a couple of molar roller sign ad meters that is. Uh, very simple to use. They use like a, uh, I think there's two op amps in it. So it's not a very complicated system to uh, build. But let's see what we have here. So as you can see, what Mike has sent me is a sign out of three. And what this is used for and he's already done a video on it, I'll link to that. Below is used for adjusting the receiver sensitivity on a radio. Now, there's a little story behind this here, and uh, I was talking with Mike. Um, I have a cyanide meter built into the AFR-1200. And you basically rotate the switch over to sign add. The meter will go over to the far right. And you inject the audio into here. And you also have a tone out. So you can set it for a thousand hertz into the receiver. 
but the problem is my AFR has been having issues. You already seen the issues with the spectrum analyzer and with the internal dummy load. And now, a couple of weeks ago, I went to use it, and the Synad function has quit. So I got to tear that down and go through that once again. It looks like I'm going to end up having to do a complete rebuild on that IFR 1200. But anyway, I was talking with Mike and had talked about building an external Synad meter because they're kind of hard to find on the internet, and when you do find them, they have a pretty good size price tag on them and I looked at different designs Dino has the uh, design adder Mike has the Motorola version I think he has several versions of it but like I say, I've looked at several, you know, several different designs and decided I would build one myself and I still may do that so uh, <laughs> I don't have to jump on that so quickly now because uh, Mike has sent this wonderful little gem. Now this piece came out of Canada and I actually saw it. Um, someone had linked a um, eBay link to this exact meter. And then when I went back and looked at it, it was gone. So I think I see why now. But as we can see, this one here is... Uh, Look at the top of it here. Get the glare off of it. I got a lot of lights on in here today. But it was property of the Canadian Coast Guard, TMM St. John's, and they have the serial number on it. Has a calibration sticker on it, and the last calibration was pylon was calibrated on 10th of October 2006 and it was good for the 10th of October 2007 it also had a little barcode on it now on the front of the meter they have in their I guess military uh, asset number they have another number here TEW113 and also had letters stuck on meaning 113 Now, the sign adder has uh, its own cable that comes off the back, and you just clip this onto the speaker leads. You also have a uh, tone out, I think it's a thousand hertz output on the front of it, and this also shows AC volts. Now, back in the day, we used to use vacuum tube voltmeters to set the receiver to, uh, you know, get the receiver peaked out. Now, sign ad, you know, single to noise, and doing it with a vacuum tube voltmeter, you know, like our B and K sitting up there, um, 177. You can put that on AC volts, set it on the 1.5 volt scale, adjust the volume. And you can pick out a receiver two different by using two different things. The meter movement and sound, detecting it by your ear. And the idea of it is to adjust the receiver so you got more single. Now you just can't peak it by the meter because the meter will also peak out on noise. So you kind of got to listen and watch the meter at the same time. With the sign adder and with the unit built into the IFR, it filters out the, the noise. So what you're seeing on the meter is going to be single. So this is going to be a, another great addition to the bench. And I've already got a place I'm going to put it. I'm going to set it right up here on top of my function generator so that'll be its new home sitting right up there that way it's central on the bench and I'll be able to get to it and uh, 
use it as I want to. But anyway, you know, we've talked back and forth with Mike, and uh, he told me two things. He said, don't buy anything until after you receive my Christmas present. And I said, okay. And he also had texted me and told me that if something's coming, it's in a Rigol box, but it's not a Rigol. <laughs> so <laughs> don't get your hopes up, you know. So that is going to be very cool to have this piece of equipment. And Mike, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. That is very thoughtful and very much appreciated. I recently purchased another piece of equipment from Mike and he did a video on it a few days ago and that is this laboratory grade power supply it's a Harrison laboratory um, supply so that is going to come in handy for doing some experiments and back if you remember I did a uh, repair video on this old heat kit function generator where it had a, sh a short in it and I had to use uh, batteries to trace the short down well that power supply will help for that because it's current limiting so I can go in and set the uh, amperage for what I want and set the voltage and you can hook that up to a uh, circuit that has a short in it and trace out and find the uh, shorted component so that's going to help a whole lot and uh, might give me a good deal on that power supply and won't know where I can turn it down. It's going to be another good addition to the bench. This all note says, Merry Christmas. I calibrated the unit. I polished the meter lens the best possible. I noticed that the meter zero adjustment is missing the activating arm. If the needle needs to be zero, just pop off the meter face lens and adjust it externally. And what it is on the back, as you see I've already got me a home for it. Right there on the meter is a little screw that you can turn. And on the back of that screw is a little arm that sticks off to one side. So there's a little uh, fork on the meter calibration and by turning this it just moves it back slightly to zero the meter so since that one's broken you can turn it and it won't do anything so all you have to do is just pop the lens off and move the little fork back and forth manually no big problem be very easy to do anyway so you know a great big thank you to Mike um, <laughs> you really uh, pull through on a lot of things. Mike's always sends the uh, the best gifts and stuff when you <laughs> get stuff from them. They just it's just the best. Um, you know, I don't know what to say. It's just that this piece of equipment is going to be very handy and I am going to enjoy using it. So uh, another update I wanted to give was on the realistic HTX-100 I've uh, decided what I was going to do was pull the whole board out and pull the other board out of the other unit and put it into customers and get this on back to them this coming week I've been doing a lot of playing around and experimenting with it as you can see here's the uh, display module and there's 21 pins that solders down to the uh, board down here as you can see and the reason why I'm going to do that is replacing the whole board is because this cannot take a lot of heat and to get the display out we we'll just pop the metal tabs off And before you know it just wanted to fall off there you go and then the display lifts right out and you got a uh, a white piece of plastic 
and the light bulb goes in there and just lights up the whole display and you know desorting this one of the pins came completely off the glass or well, this is actually a, a, a plastic polymer that's sandwiched together and you can't see it in the camera and it's hard to see in the, uh, the light I can set it at a certain angle and I can actually see the, um, the digits across it, the six digits and the memory channel and you can see the electrodes coming down to each pin the problem is there is no way you can buy an off-the-shelf item to replace this with and make it work um, this display was custom built for these radios you know the, the President Lincoln's the HR 2510 and the Realistics in the 2600's Well, excuse my rough crudity of this drawing but this is just to show you the display has six segment um, there's actually six uh, numeric numbers um, seven segment there's two decibel points there's three span points and what this is when you hit span it moves it and highlights and it changes to different frequencies we also have a um, one through zero numeric number for memory channels you have memo up here for memory channels and it displays single sideband CW and transmit and like I said there's no way you can go out and find a direct replacement LCD for this radio so whatever you do is going to have to be custom made so what I'm looking at actually having to take the faceplate and going out and see if I can find some type of display that will fit in here and then what we'll have to do is whatever the display is we'll have to go into the radio itself And find out what each one of these pins are doing I know some of them are supplying voltage but we got to find out what each pin is doing and how it affects this display so after we get to know what all the data is going on we can then find another display we should be able to come off the existing pins of the radio and then put you know some kind of microcontroller board interface to accept the information from the radio into this controller and then into the new display and that's going to be a whole lot of work to do but I want to try to find something off the shelf without having to be you know completely custom built because I know there's a lot of people out there that has these radios and these displays are going to fail so we'll have to look at doing that in the near future but in the time being I'm just going to swap out the board and get this radio back to the customer so he'll have a, a working unit So with that, any ideas that anybody wants to throw at me, I'm all ears. I'll be, you know, glad to hear them. Uh, you know, going in here and trying to re-engineer re the whole radio and putting a DDS uh, VFO in it or something, it's, you know, I don't really want to do that. I want to take what we got here, come off the front, I mean, and, you know, build something to replace the faulty component uh, someone said well you know just put a frequency counter on it that's all good but without the LCD display you know we can't tell what mode we own we can't you know figure out what span is that so we got to have something that we can program 
to kind of put this same layout onto another display so any uh, any ideas or thoughts or whatever you have I'd like to hear your opinions and what you think and we'll look at that and the design of doing this in the near future so here so I'm looking here at the schematic of our HTX 100 you can see there's a microprocessor and this is your LCD display and it is correct you know connected directly to this microprocessor so we got to figure out what all is going on inside this processor and what signals is sending out to this display you know I think this part is very you know self-explanatory we just got to figure out which pin is doing what and how it's programmed to tell this display what to do so we just need to find something you know an off-the-shelf replacement display and then something probably another controller in between these two you know, I've been real busy in the shop you know working a lot of overtime here lately but uh, we've been in the shop doing some things and one thing I'm doing is rebuilding my heat kit IT28 capacitor um, tester it's developed a few problems so I'm going through that and trying to get it back together because it ain't, you know I don't use this all the time but when you got some some capacitors I want to test you know this is a great unit for testing them so we're rebuilding that and I am also back on the 101 radio I have it sitting on the other bench and I'm going through it and shooting some footage so in the next couple of weeks we'll have some videos out on that I know I've been getting a lot of people asking about it but I had to order some um, capacitors for it, you know, and you have to kind of spend your money wisely sometime, especially around Christmas time. We've got plenty of grandkids to buy for, so, you know, we have to kind of watch the spending a little bit, but we'll be getting some more off footage back out on those before long. Yeah, but one thing I have to get for the uh, capacitor meter which is the last thing I need to order is some new banana jacks these as you can see it's completely uh, froze up on some of them they won't even turn and the reason being is that Heathkit used aluminum binding post instead of uh, the steel and after the years that aluminum has become corroded and you know they freeze up and you can't turn them to save your life not even soaking them would do any good so it's best just to snatch them out and replace them so anyway you know just a short video to show you that Santa is still alive and well and uh, he's still sending out nice things but uh, we really want to get that uh, HTX 100 problem solved because I want to give this radio away we are coming up on close to 3,000 subscribers thanks to all of you guys and so I'm probably getting somewhere around six to seven hundred emails a week through YouTube and it is impossible for me to go through all these comments and messages that I'm receiving so if you want to get up with me better, the, the best way under every video, there's a show more tab. And if you click on that show more tab, you'll go through here and you'll see some links that I'll leave. And usually one of them, with my all the time, there's always going to be one called contact information. If you'll follow this link to my website, you can uh, find easier ways to get up with me. There's, like I say, there's just too many um, YouTube comments and links to, you know, to, to try to follow for me to keep up with. It's just gone completely crazy. And I appreciate everyone that does, you know, try to contact me, but it's just no way I can do it, you know, running a part-time hobby out here in the shop and working full-time job. So this is always the easiest way to get up with me is through this contact link. 
and anytime if you visit my front page always be sure to check out my featured channels over here these are the channels that I like to watch myself and you'll see them all over here on the right hand side so check out these guys they have some really good great videos also so anyway we thank you you know leave your comments down below we'd like to hear from you um, again if you want to send me cards letters or whatever contact me click the show more tab and you'll find links to that anyway we'll catch you in the next video we should have uh, a few more before Christmas so we'll see you then